Hello friends and welcome to yet another exhilarating video of Wisdom Zone and this is Shubhra and I'm quite sure you have already guessed it and you are quite eagerly waiting for this 9th session on English conversation practice and today I'm gonna give you 18 useful sentences to practice your English conversation so watch this video carefully till the end and do not skip it at all and if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do not wait and immediately subscribe to Wisdom Zone and hit the bell icon to get the first notification. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So friends, welcome back once again to this ninth session on English conversation practice. And today I'm gonna give you 18 useful sentences to practice your English conversation. These sentences can be used in different situations and let me tell you, you can use some of them in formal communication and some of them can be used in informal communication. So please watch this video and follow all the sentences and all the examples I'm gonna give. And before I get started, let me also inform you. I have provided the previous eight links on English conversation practice in the description. So if you haven't checked the previous videos, do not forget to check the links given in the description. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with today's 18 extremely useful sentences for English conversation practice. So friends, as you see the first extremely useful sentence I'm gonna discuss is on your screen that is if you don't mind me saying. This is a very useful sentence and let me tell you it is used in a polite context. So it is used to be polite and if you say something that might upset or embarrass someone so you can use this before saying the sentence or after that also so this sentence is quite essential to communicate politely and you can use it as I already mentioned before saying a particular sentence or after it also to make it sound polite so as you see the example if you don't mind me saying I think you look quite disappointed so something you're saying may be quite embarrassing or something which might upset others that time you can add this sentence before or at last to make the entire conversation sound polite so up next we will see a similar one which you see is on your screen number two that is if you don't mind me asking the previous one was if you don't mind me saying this is if you don't mind me asking and it is also used with a question and it's a polite way of asking something that again you think that could be embarrassing or it might upset someone so if you want to ask something and if you think that it might upset or embarrass someone so add this particular sentence before or after to make the entire speech sound quite polite so as you see the example are you married if you don't mind me asking so it is a very personal question when you're asking someone are you married or are you single or are you divorced or do you have a boyfriend or girlfriend so all these are very personal questions so if you are asking to someone the person may feel slightly embarrassed or awkward also so you can make this conversation sound polite by adding this if you don't mind me asking so I'm quite sure it's crystal clear up next we are going to focus on the third one which you see on your screen that is help yourself it is also a very useful way of saying that you are asking someone to take something that person wants without asking permission when you are saying this so that means you are trying to mean that someone doesn't need to ask anything ask for your permission and the person can go ahead it is normally used in case of food so when you're serving food and you say help yourself with this so let me show you how to use it as you see the example help yourself to some more pastry so I'm quite sure it's clear. Okay, let's focus on the fourth one which you see on your screen that is under the circumstances or in the circumstances. So the meaning of both of these are same. It means in a particular situation. Under the circumstances or in the circumstances these sentences mean that in a particular situation. So let me show you how to use it. There is nothing he can do under the circumstances. That means in that particular situation, in that particular condition, there is nothing he can do. So I'm quite sure it's crystal clear that means in a particular situation. So up next we are going to turn our attention towards the fifth one which you see fifth one is under any circumstances. Under any circumstances used to mean that something must not or will not happen in any conditions. 
so that's the meaning of this particular sentence under any circumstances so let me show you how to use this beautiful sentence as you see the example racial discrimination is totally unacceptable under any circumstances that means under no condition it is acceptable so like this way you can emphasize and convey your message strongly up next we are going to turn our attention towards the sixth one which you see on your screen that is no big deal it is also a helpful sentence and it's very short let me tell you what exactly it means it means not to be serious issue or not surprising something which is not that serious any issue that is not serious or not surprising so that time we use no big deal if you want to convey that it's nothing so serious or surprising so then you add this short sentence and say no big deal let me show you how to use it it's no big deal if you want some cash i can lend you so I'm quite sure you have understood that means it's not something which is quite serious so you make that person feel comfortable by using this short sentence up next we are going to turn our attention towards the seventh one which you see on your screen it is can you give me so after that you can follow it up with what you want to ask for it is used to ask for something and it is used informally the can is used obviously in informal context so you can say can you give me your pen so let me show you how to use it can you give me your car for a week so when you are asking for something in informal manner or informally that time you say can you give me can you give me your car or can you give me your mobile so like this way you can ask for something informally but in case of formal conversation you should not use can we should try the next one which you see on your screen that is number eight that is could you please give me so it sounds formal i'm quite sure it's clear meaning is the same that means it is used to ask for something but it is totally formal it is used formally so let me show you how to use it in a sentence could you please give me your car for a week so like this we can ask for something in a formal way so i'm quite sure it's clear up next we will turn our attention towards the ninth amazing sentence for english conversation so as you see the ninth one is i am facing a problem that means you are encountering a problem so it's a very useful one and i have given it specifically because some people use another sentence which is not correct which is incorrect so just to make you understand what exactly is the correct sentence when you are talking about a problem which you are going through you have to use this i am facing a problem but you should not use this sentence i am facing with a problem which is totally incorrect which is grammatically wrong i'm quite sure it's clear that's why i have given this sentence to make you understand what is the correct sentence structure when you want to convey that you are going through a problem so let me show you how to use it i am facing a problem i want your suggestions so i'm quite sure it's clear but don't say i am facing with a problem as it is not correct so up next we are going to turn our attention to a certain useful one which you see on your screen the 10th useful sentence is have a safe trip or journey so have a safe trip or journey it is obviously used to wish someone a good journey or a safe journey so let me show you how to use it have a safe trip catch you later so like this way you can just wish someone to have a good trip or a safe trip and it's quite useful isn't that when you trying to see up someone so use this have a safe trip catch you later or see you later up next we are going to see the 11th one 11th short sentences on your screen that is see you soon see you soon is useful as you know that um, it is commonly used also it is used for saying goodbye to someone you are going to meet again soon okay you know that you are going to meet that person soon that time you say goodbye and use this particular short sentence that see you soon so as you see the example goodbye see you soon i hope it's clear up next we will see the 12th useful sentence for english conversation as you see the uh, 12th one is sleep tight it's a short phrase i will say it is used to mean that someone will sleep deeply and well so when you are trying to say that someone should have a good sleep or say that the person should have a good sleep before going to bed so that time you say sleep tight so let me show you how to use it good night sam sleep tight that means you are hoping that the person will have a sound and good sleep so very useful one i'm quite sure it's clear up next let me the 13th one that is give me a break give me a break is a very useful one it can be used in two ways i'll show you the first use at first the first use 
is to tell someone to stop bothering you so when someone is bothering you that time we say give me a break so let me show you how to use it give me a break i'm just 15 minutes late maybe someone is bothering you for small small things then normally we use this particular sentence give me a break come on give me a break also we say come on give me a break i'm just five minutes late so i'm quite sure it's clear up next we will see the second use of it and the second use is also quite interesting as you see give me a break number 14 it is also used to say that you do not believe or you are disgusted about what someone has said and you totally disbelieve and you are totally disgusted about what someone said so let me show you how to use it in a sentence tom says his father had an audi give me a break i doubt his father even had a car so that means there is a kind of a disgust and disbelief that his, his father never had this audi which he claims that his father had so i'm quite sure it's clear by this particular sentence you express that you totally disbelieve someone up next we will focus on the 15th one which you see on your screen that is try one's luck it is an idiom in fact and it can be used also very easily it means to try to achieve something or get something you want that is to try one's luck so let me show you how to use it i decided to try my luck at stock trading that means i decided to try this stock trading i thought i'll be able to do it right so that's why i have used this particular idiom try my luck and that is at stock trading up next we will see the 16th useful expression i would say that is feel free to do something so it is also quite useful this particular expression it means to give permission to someone to do something without hesitation it is obviously an idiom in fact feel free to do something means that when you give permission to someone to do something without hesitation so as you see the example let me show you please don't hesitate feel free to ask anything you want to ask trying to make a person feel comfortable so that the person doesn't hesitate to do something or say something so you can add this line and make that person feel comfortable that feel free to ask anything or feel free to do anything up next we will turn our attention to the 17th one which you see on your screen that is what do you mean since i hope you understood it's a question in fact so it is very useful it is used to show that you are annoyed or you disagree with someone when someone says something and you are totally annoyed with what the person says or maybe you disagree with that person that time you say what do you mean as you see the example what do you mean it was my mistake that means you express your doubt you think that what the person is saying is totally wrong up next we will concentrate on the last one for today that is i will be with you in a moment it's a very useful sentence it is used to tell someone to wait patiently for a short while and you will attend him or her soon so when you ask someone to just wait for some time patiently and you will be with that person we will attend that person for us after some time so that time you say i will be with you in a moment let me show you how to use as you see the example please be seated i'll be with you in a moment so like this way you can use this beautiful sentence and convey your message that you want someone to wait patiently for a short while and you will attend that person soon so today i gave you 18 extremely useful sentences for different situations you can use some of them in informal conversation and some of them you can use obviously in formal conversation so try to go through the examples and practice and comment below and again it is my request to all the viewers if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do not wait and immediately subscribe to wisdom zone and hit the bell icon to get the first notification so stay tuned for further informative videos and do not forget to like share comment and subscribe to wisdom zone. Thank you.